So I'm going to take a quick look at strabismus and then also look at the path of the cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6. Strabismus is commonly called cross-eyed, but it's not always crossed. As you can see from the picture I've drawn over here, the eye isn't pointing inward, it's pointing outward in some cases. Clinically, this is uh, something called heterotropia. Heterotropia. If it's, um, if it's manifest and if it's latent, it's called heterophoria. So what does that mean? It, it means basically if the eye is always um, looking away at it, and if they're not looking at the same angle, then uh, if it's always the case, then it's heterotropia. However, if you cover one eye up, such as, so if I cover one eye and that causes the cross-eyed or the strabismus, then that's known as heterophoria. Now let's move in really quick and we'll take another look at some, uh, some other terminology. If the eye is pointing inward, then that is known as an esotropia. And if it's pointing outward, that's an exotropia. And then it could also be, um, it can, you can also have a circular gaze with it. And this is either called cyclo or torsional. Cyclostrabismus or torsional strabismus. If the affected eye gaze is higher than the, the forward gazing eye, then that's termed hypertropia. And if it's lower, then it's hypotropia. So now that we got the looking uh, part down, let's look at a few other things. If it's due to a paralysis, so if it's due to a paralysis, then we call it um, paritic. So if paralysis is paritic, and I spelled that wrong, it's P-A-R-E-T-I-C. And of course, if it's not due to paralysis, it's termed non-paritic. Paritic, paritic. Now, one more thing in the classification. So, the eye, if it's um, if it's always in the in the same general angle away from the gaze of this eye, like if this eye were to move and look over here, if this eye kind of followed it but still didn't line up with it. So, if it's in the same magnitude, it's called committent. So. Committent is same magnitude, and non-committent is different magnitude. Now this can be due to a bunch of different things. So first of all, if we have cranial nerve impairment, then it can cause a strabismus. So there are some specific uh, things. So with cranial nerve 3, you're going to get down and out gaze. With cranial nerve 4 impairment, you'll get up and slightly inward uh, to the impaired eye. So go through this again, uh, cranial nerve 3 down and out, cranial nerve 4, it's going to be primarily up but maybe slightly inward, and then cranial nerve 6, you're going to get an inward gaze to the affected eye. Due to these being nerves, uh, there could be a number of impairments that cause damage, and so we're not going to go through all of those, but we can, uh, so we're going to classify these as nerve problems, uh, muscle problems or uh, optic problems. We just looked at some of the nerve problems, but so anything that affects a nerve, yes, anything that affects a muscle as well. So a muscle, we could have something like uh, myasthenia gravis. We could have botulism, uh, and and this is uh, something that you got to be careful for, especially with a lot of the cosmetic Botox and stuff. If someone's not trained to do it there's a good chance they can get one of the eyes, uh, the eye muscles. And then with optic problems, let me explain this. So if I have, uh, I'm going to look at, this is from above. So I'm looking down at the eye from above and I have light coming in right here and light coming in right here. With my, we'll call this the, um, we'll call this the, uh, right, the left eye and we'll call this one the right eye. If light comes in the left eye and it goes straight back into the Fovea centralis, perfect, no problem, good. If it comes in the right eye and for some reason it gets bent a little bit to the uh, inwardly, then your eye is going to naturally start deviating in another direction so that when that light comes in, 
it hits the center of acuity and that causes you to not have a double vision so sometimes your eyes try to accommodate for double vision by uh, altering their position and this will cause a, a strabismus as well and it could be corrected with uh, optic lenses now that I've spent five minutes on strabismus let me move on to cranial nerves so we can get through this so the first thing we have is cranial nerve 3 we're looking at all the cranial nerves that innervate movement of the eye and cranial nerve 3 is found in the midbrain and it's uh, it's located in the same area as the edinger westfall nucleus. So the, the oculomotor nucleus and the edinger westfall nucleus are right by each other and hard to distinguish from each other. And uh, so we, Dr. Aldridge has told us she's never going to ask us to distinguish between the two. And it's good because they both uh, work with muscles in the eye and they travel together. So they both make up cranial nerve 3. So we have cranial nerve 3 and it has two divisions. It has an inferior division and a superior division. So the inferior division is going to be all ipsilateral and it's going to in innervate the inferior oblique, the inferior rectus, and the medial rectus. So if you were to draw an eye, uh, so let me draw my eye, and I were to attach all the muscles on it. So I've got the superior rectus, medial rectus, inferior rectus, lateral rectus, superior oblique and inferior oblique and I were to just say I'm going to cut this thing uh, like this then all of these are innervated by the inferior portion of cranial nerve 3 the inferior branch we automatically know that we can cross off the lateral rectus and the superior oblique because they're innervated by cranial nerve 6 and cranial nerve 4 respectively so then we have the superior division, so it's going to go down ipsilaterally as well, and it's going to innervate what muscle? No, you probably were thinking the superior rectus, that is incorrect. Ipsilaterally, it innervates the levator palpebrae superioris. And then it also crosses the midline and comes down the other side, so I'm going to, I'm going to abbreviate this LPS, levator palpebrae superioris, it's going to go across the midline and it's going to innervate also the levator palpebrae superioris of the other side and the superior rectus. So from oculomotor nucleus we get a superior branch and an inferior branch and they go to their respective places. And that's illustrated much better here by Dr. Aldridge and so basically yes the oculomotor nucleus we got the inferior division, the superior division, it crosses the midline and innervates contralaterally. Next we have trochlear nucleus right here. Trochlear nucleus is kind of a BAMF because it does what it wants and doesn't listen to any of the rules. So imagine we have our trochlear nucleus here. It's inside, we're going to go be inside the midbrain. It's just going to go inside the midbrain cross and then it's going to come out on the, this, so this is dorsal, this is ventral. So this is the one cranial nerve where all of the fibers for the right side uh, originate from the left and all of the fibers from the left side originate on the right and they come out not in the front but in the back of the brain stem and it goes straight from there to the superior oblique muscle and actually I should draw that wrapping around to the superior oblique muscle because it's going starting in the back and it moves around wraps around the brain stem so here's a better picture of that, trochlear nucleus crosses the midline within the brain stem, goes to the superior oblique as the trochlear nerve. Left nucleus, right nerve, right nerve, right nucleus, right nerve. I did not read that at all right. So left nucleus is right nerve, and the right nerve makes up the right superior oblique muscle. In this picture we have an image of the abducens nucleus and the median longitudinal fasciculus. It's important because the abducens is... Uh, nucleus is going to use the MLF to cross the midline. So we have our abducens nucleus right here. It's going to go ipsilateral down and innervate the lateral rectus. And then it's also going to cross the midline, use the medial longitudinal fasciculus to go to the oculomotor nucleus because it wants to also innervate uh, the uh, medial rectus of the other eye. So you can look the same way. So it's a fairly simple pathway. Here it is again. Let me make it more clear. What really happens is the abducens nucleus in fiber 2 lateral rectus muscle. Is that right? And you should be knowing that it crossed the midline on the MLF to synapse with the oculomotor nucleus. 
Is that right? That is right. So I have eight questions. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to bring candy to class or not, but uh, since there are eight, there's a question for me, and if I do bring candy, I, I'll probably just eat it before I answer. But question one, where does cranial nerve nucleus originate? You can pause it, and then I'll show you the answer. Answer is the midbrain. Good job. What other nucleus, question number two, what other nucleus is near cranial nerve three and travels with it in the fibers? All right. Edinger Westfall nucleus. Good job, guys. What are the main branches of the oculomotor nerve? You know this. This is the preschool. Come on. Inferior and superior. What does the inferior branch innervate? Remember, I drew the eye, I cut it in half, I crossed off some muscles. What does the inferior branch innervate? The inferior rectus, inferior oblique, and medial rectus. You guys are awesome. And what does the superior branch innervate? And I want you to name exactly which side, ipsilateral or contralateral. The answer on the ipsilateral, you get the levator palpebra superioris. On the contralateral, you get the levator palpebra superioris and superior rectus. Where does the trochlear nerve originate? Where's the trochlear nucleus at? And the answer is midbrain. Where does the cranial nerve 4 cross the midline? Is it inside? Is it outside? Is it upside down? It's within the midbrain. Last of all, why did cranial nerve 6 cross the road? I'm asking essentially, why does it uh, decussate? Why does it send fibers to decussate along the medial longitudinal fasciculus? I know you know this, guys. Come on, this is easy. It's the oculomotor. It wants to talk to the oculomotor nucleus. Oculomotor nucleus owes him some money, so he's going to collect. That's all I got.